Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, it's time for another video. And I'm back with a video I haven't done for a while. It's another one of the Three Best Trick series. Uh, now it's been a couple of months since I've done one of these. What is the Three Best Trick series? It's a video where I talk about a particular plot or a particular genre in magic, and I talk about three tricks that I consider are really good versions of that particular plot. And the whole idea of doing these videos is hopefully I'm highlighting tricks to you guys that you might not have seen before. Um, because once again, like I say on the Hidden Gems, we stand on the shoulders of giants and we race to find that latest and greatest trick, don't we? Whilst in actual fact, there's tricks that have come out from years and years and years ago that are just as good and people aren't really aware of them. So the three trick series is one where I try to highlight particular tricks of a particular genre. And today, I'm actually going to be talking about voodoo. I mean, it's coming up on uh, Halloween soon, right, guys? It's coming up on Halloween, and voodoo is a great trick to do at Halloween. But in all honesty with you, it's a really good premise to use all year round. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting hook that I've always used in my close-up work. You know, just the whole idea of saying, hey, have you ever heard of voodoo before? I don't know if I believe in it at all, but to be honest, it's the whole idea of, you know, having a, an image or having a picture of something and having it, uh, whatever happens to that, happens to the person the picture is meant to be intended for. Let me give you an example. I think that um, the whole concept of voodoo really, really, really does create intrigue, create interest, it's a great hook, and there's lots of different ways that you can actually take the trick. So on this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about three tricks that have got a voodoo premise that you might not have seen before that are really super fun, and uh, and I'll tell you exactly where you can learn them. So buckle up, I hope you're excited, we're gonna get straight into it with the first trick. So the first trick that I'm gonna be talking about is Voodoo 2.0 by Nate Cranzo, available from Penguin Magic. Now this is something that I've probably done for about 20 odd years. And Nate Cranzo, I've been a fan of Nate Cranzo for a long time. Now Nate originally put this trick out on his DVD, and I think it was out out of the box, outside the box, I think it was, when he originally uh, uh, put this out, and it was on a DVD about 15, 20 years ago, something like that, it was a very, very long time ago, and this was one trick on that project. Now, that's not been available for a long time, but Nate now works very closely with Penguin Magic, and recently, uh, I say recently, about two or three years ago, put this out as a download on Penguin Magic as well. So if you want to learn this, if you like this, you can go to Penguin Magic and you can pick it up as a download. It's called Voodoo 2.0 by Nate Cranzo. So what is Voodoo 2.0? Well, basically, the whole idea is it's a card trick, but it ticks all of the boxes for me. So it's a card trick that uses business cards. Um, and so you get to give the business card as and the playing card at the end. And it's got a very interesting premise with it. Now, if you've not seen it before, I'm going to perform it for Jack so you can see exactly what this is all about. And then when I've performed it, I'll talk about why it's yeah. so good. And this is all about voodoo, Jack. Oh, um, no. Yeah, I mean, obviously, do we know in voodoo? I do now. Well, I'm going to try and show you that voodoo exists. Now, for those people that are watching at home that don't know what voodoo is, the idea is that you have a, a, a like a doll that would look like somebody, and and you would take that doll and you would put a pin in it, and whatever you did to the doll would happen to the person that the doll is meant to look like. Now, you're going to take a card, Jack, and that card is going to represent you. Okay. I'm going to look away. I'll spread them out face up. Take any one that you like the look of. You're going to write your name in it, so maybe one with a bit of a white space. When you've got it, yeah. let me know. Okay. I'm going to give you a pen. What you're going to do is you're going to take the pen and you're going to write your name on the face of the card in big letters. Not on the back, on the face. Not on your face, on the face of the card. And then when you've done that, show everyone the, uh, the card. I'll put the pen away, mainly because that's how I got it. And we're going to put the card back. So as I uh, go through, just say stop. Stop. Perfect. Put the card back there. Boop. Nice. And we'll leave it down somewhere in the middle of the deck. Um... Jack. Yo. I spread the cards out face up, correct? You did. Which means that there's no way I could know what card you picked. Would you agree? Yeah. Um, I looked away. And you had a free choice. It's not like I could have said, hey, take this one. Everything was fair, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm going to do is somewhere in here is your card. I'm going to put the deck back inside the box. And that card that you signed represents you. So we'll put that right there in front of you. You are in there somewhere. Now, we also have a, uh, a business, you'll need the pen actually again, because I also have a business card. Take the lid off the pen for me, Jack, and just put your initials on the business card. Uh, that's very good. Uh, available for weddings, anniversaries, bar mitzvahs, and birthday parties. 
Um, so, you know, book me now is what I'm saying. So here's what we're going to do. There we go. I'm going to fold this card up like that. I'm going to fold this business card into quarters. Because this business card represents the voodoo doll. Oh, no. So that represents you. This represents the voodoo doll. Because it's got your initials on it. So they're basically linked, right? So whatever I do to this business card happens to the card in there. Card in there. So because I've folded it up into quarters, have a look at this. Now, inside the box, can you see a gap in the deck? I can. Yeah, there's a reason there's a gap in the deck, and the reason is, if I take the cards out and I cut, you can see that there's now a card folded up in the middle of the deck. What the One fuck? card folded up in the middle, and because I folded this up, that can only mean one thing, your card is folded Whoa. up like that as well. That's eerie. But what's interesting is it actually works in reverse. So whatever happens to that, happens to the doll. Take this business card and put it in your hand and squeeze it tightly. Okay. Let's see if we can do something. If we were going to... Now, obviously, the whole idea of, of voodoo is to harm the person. So if I was going to harm a playing card, what would I do? Oh, God, I'm scared I'd to probably it. tear the corner off, wouldn't I? That would be a, a way to do it, tear the corner off. I'll tell you another way to do it. It would be to set it on fire, right, Jack? That would be a way to do it as well. Let me just uh, set it on fire, see if I can get uh, some fire going. You're incredibly intelligent of me to do this over a yeah. fucking expensive plus. Yeah, don't try us at home, please. <laughs> There we go. So, um, be honest with me. Tell me, are you feeling in something inside your hand? Do you feel it getting hotter? Do you feel any tingling or do you not feel anything? Don't feel anything. Now you sound like Sarah. Um, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Well, th you might not have felt it, but it might have worked. Uh, open up your hand and let's just see. Because now... This card that you wrote your what name the on fuck? has had the corner torn off oh, no. and has been burnt. That's oh, eerie. Proof that voodoo is real and you can have both of those as a souvenir. There you go. So that's Voodoo 2.0. And let me talk about all the different ways that I love this. So first of all, it's not actually that difficult to do. Obviously, there's a couple of moves in there. The hardest is probably the Mercury card fold. Um, it's, it's, but it's relatively easy. I mean, if you've been into magic for any length of time, you should have no problem with this routine. Uh, the other thing that I love about this is it's really designed for a walk around situation. No table required walk around situation they're holding on to the props the whole time it's an instant reset no angles required and the magic happens in the hands of the spectators literally if you had a bingo card of all of the things that people need to make sure of in order to have a commercial trick this ticks every single box now i love the fact that before you do anything before you even set the premise you have the card picked the cards lost in the deck and you give the box to the spectator with the card inside it doesn't feel like anything's happened and then the whole premise of the card being folded up and hey well, i'm going to do something to this and whatever i do to this is going to happen to that card let's fold it in half which makes sense because obviously with voodoo you're meant to be inflicting pain on somebody so what would you do to inflict pain on the playing card fold it in half right so you fold the card in half and then i love that moment that when you open up the box and you see the gap in the deck and you take the cards out and they cut and it's their folded up card i mean you could you could stop right there and have an incredible moment but the beautiful thing about the structure and the routining that nate's put into this routine means that that's just the very beginning because now you can flip things around and you can have that person that's holding that business card hold onto it tightly and you can tear the corner off, you can burn it and it's still going to affect the uh, the business card that they've been holding onto the whole time. Now, Jack has seen a lot of magic, so this didn't happen with Jack, but I'm telling you right now, when you perform this in a real world environment to people in a gig and you get them to hold onto that business card and you mentally implant into them, hey, I'm gonna burn this and whatever happens to this is gonna happen to that card. Now this might burn your hand, but it's worth it for entertainment value. Watch this. And you kind of go through this moment where you're burning the, the playing card and, uh, and, and the business card. Uh, you know, you say, hey, it's gonna to happen to the business card. I've had people go, oh my God, I can feel it. It's such a strong moment. If that happens, which it does like over 50% of the time, Forget about it. At that point, there's nothing you can do that's going to create more of an impact than that moment right there. The other thing that I've found that's very interesting is once you've got the folded up card and you say, let's try it in reverse, what else can we do to, to, to destroy a card? They will come up with the idea of rip it or burn it. And I go, yeah, let's say they'll go burn it. 
Good idea. I'll rip it up and I'll burn it. And it feels like you're doing what you are told to do by the spectators. And Nate talks about this on the download and he talks about how you can actually engineer this to happen almost every single time. The beautiful thing about this routine is at the end, you've got a business card that's been absolutely demolished. You've got a playing card that's been absolutely demolished. You give them to the spectator, a signed business card, a signed playing card, and they can keep it. And you better, you bet, you know that they're going to be telling people about that. So you take into consideration it's got an incredible hook. It's got an interesting premise. Uh, it's very strong magically. It's over very, very quickly. It happens in the hands of the spectators. It's very different to anything else that's out there. You know, I, I do a lot of Halloween gigs where I'm doing walk around magic and I'm saying that I get told, hey, can you make it Halloween-y? The second that I get told that, this is the trick that I do. But it's also good enough to do all year round. So there you go. That's your first voodoo trick. You can get it from Penguin Magic as a download. It's uh, it's called Voodoo 2.0. Now we're going to move on to the second routine. So the second routine that you've probably uh, never seen before that involves voodoo is a trick by Guy Hollingsworth. Now let me give you a little bit of context here. Uh, in Guy's book, Drawing Room Deceptions, which is the book that's got some of his most amazing magic in, um, like Waving the Aces and Reformation and things like that, in the foreword at the beginning of the book, I think it was the foreword, it's a long time since I've read it, but in the foreword I think it was at the beginning of the book, he actually talks about this trick and he actually mentions, hey, people don't read the forwards, I don't think anyone's going to see this trick, but if you do, hey, this is an incredible routine. And he then proceeds to talk about this particular trick that you're about to see. Now, Guy is known as having incredible sleight of hand ability. He's known at performing intricately complicated sleight of hand in such a beautiful, clear way which is why the juxtaposition between that and this is so strange because this is self-working honestly self-working and it's also when you think about self-working tricks there's normally a massive setup this does not have a massive setup it's literally one card setup you can set up to you you, you need to create a, a gimmick that takes like two minutes to create typically when i do this i'll create like a deck full i'll open up a deck of great deck full of gimmicks and then i can throw it in my close-up case and if i want to do this i can throw it into the deck it makes a great opening routine for card magic you know once you've produced the deck or made the deck appear you go into this and just like with nate's routine it's an incredible hook because it's a very similar hook because you're talking about voodoo and you're talking about the effect that uh, you have on a voodoo doll and how it affects something else. Now, the difference with this routine to Nate Kranzer's Voodoo 2.0 is that this, you, you're actually inflicting the pain on a mate, on a playing card of a mate. And it allows you to talk about how you've got 26 mates in a deck of cards and what happens to this one, happens to this one, and so on and so on forth. Now, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I am going to uh, show you a full performance of this right now. Uh, so let's do a performance to Jack of this particular routine. Then when you've got the performance, we will uh, we'll carry on. So we've got a pack of crane cards here. Nice. Um, they're all there. They're all different, as you can see. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to have you pick a card. And we can do it in a really fair way. So what I want you to do is cut off some cards and put them there. Okay. It's up to you how many. Fantastic, and we'll uh, we'll just put those there for a second. Now, here's the thing. Let me explain to you, Jack, and to everyone that's watching at home exactly what's going to happen with what you're going to see right now. Um, I'm going to prove to you that voodoo exists. Oh, God, not again. No, I am. I'm going to prove to you that voodoo exists. Because the whole idea of voodoo, as you know, is you have a doll, and you have the person that the doll is meant to look like. Whatever you do to the doll happens to the person. Well, in the deck of cards, you have 26 perfect mates. Cards are identical in every way. Uh, the same colour, the same value. So, for example, a seven of diamonds would be the seven of hearts. They're both red. Uh, they're both sevens. The only difference is they're slightly different suits, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, an ace of spades would be the ace of clubs and so on and so forth. So you cut here. Uh, let's have a look at the card you cut to. You cut to the queen of clubs. So what would the perfect mate to the queen of clubs be? The queen of spades. Queen of spades. So uh, because this is like voodoo, whatever happens to this queen of clubs happens to the queen of spades. What happens to it? Well... Let's start simple. Turn that card over. Perfect. There you go. You see the Queen of Spades comes over in the middle of the deck. All right. Whatever happens to that Queen happens to the Queen in the deck. So let's see if we can go one step further. Voodoo is all about inflicting harm on people. So let's tear the corner off this, uh, off this Queen. Whatever happens to that Queen... Oh, there you go. Hang on. <laughs> 
happens to that queen right over there. Poor queen. It's quite weird, right? But everything, so I'll tell you what, uh, hold your hand out for me. Put your other hand on top. Let's see if we can take this one step further. Watch. Uh, if I'm gonna really inflict pain on, uh, on something, I would use fire. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna light the back of this card like that. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, <laughs> Almost lighting my thumb as well, but you can see that the card is lit. Yeah. Do you feel the card in your hand getting hot? No. Because whatever happens to this card happens to that card. So if you lift up your hand and turn the card over, Whoa. you can see that is now burnt as well. And you can have those as a souvenir. I don't think I will. Yeah, keep them. There you go. Merry Christmas. So this is um, just a killer trick. I, I perform this or all the time. Not as much these days as I did do when I worked in restaurants, but it's still a trick that I am more than happy to perform. What I love about this is if you can do a cross-cut force, you can do the trick. Like, literally, that's it. If you can do a cross-cut force, then you can do the trick. And you don't need to do a cross-cut force. You can force the card any way that you want to. But it makes sense to use a cross-cut force in this particular routine because the deck needs to be cut anyway as part of the method. At that point, everything happens with no moves. First of all, the card turns face up, which is a nice opening moment. Then the corner gets torn off. Then it gets burnt. And, and you're left with a regular shuffled deck of cards in use. Or you're left with a deck that could still be in stack because you just all you've done technically is you've cut the deck. So you could literally have a deck that's in stack. You could open with this routine and then you could go into any other routine you wanted to. Let's say you were using Mnemonic or Stebbins or something like that. That's not a problem at all. Now you saw me do this on the table, but you don't need to use a table. It can be done in this. Uh, you can be done walk around. It can be done mix and mingle. A lot of the time, the magic happens in the hands of the spectator. At that final moment, when they hold the card in their hand, and then you burn the back of the mate, and then the card's turned over and it's burnt as well. It's an incredible moment. It really is, and it always is a fun thing to give that as a as a souvenir out to the spectator that you're performing for. Uh, and again, like I say, I don't want to labour the point, but like I said before, having that voodoo presentation as a hook really entices people in and it really brings them in. So that's the second trick. Thank you very much, Guy Hollingsworth, for creating and publishing that. We're going to talk about one final routine right now and we're going to get into it. Let's do it. OK, so let's talk about the final trick. So the final trick that we're going to be talking about is actually one of mine. It's called Voodoo Man. And it's one that I probably put together about 11 years ago. And it was designed for a restaurant I was performing at that had more of a gothic theme. And I wanted to give my business card out and I wanted to do it in a fun way. I wanted people to have my business card because when I was working restaurants, my most important thing was giving out business cards. Every single table had at least one business card. So a lot of the routines that I actually structured together when I was performing in restaurants regularly was designed about giving a business card out. So there was a lot of business card related magic. Uh, but I also knew that I wanted to do the voodoo style theme. And for, uh, I alternated this with Nate's, uh, with Nate's Voodoo 2.0. So I would do Nate's Voodoo 2.0. And then on the next table, I would do this. And they were very, very different to each other while still having the same premise that th fit into the theme of the restaurant that I was working in. So what is it? Well, I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm just going to show you a performance, first of all, and then we'll bring it back into the studio. So this is Voodoo Man. Uh, Jack, I've got a whole bunch of things here. Now, the first thing I've got is a, uh, a business card. I've got a whole, well, I've got two stacks of business cards, but on this one, I drew something. We'll get back to those in a minute. Okay. Uh, I'm not the best artist in the world, as you know, but I drew a little man. Aww. And the reason I drew a little man, very, very simply, is because this is all about voodoo. Oh, Do you believe in voodoo? The Do I? I don't know. <laughs> you know, you know that it's been said that if you have a voodoo doll and you stab the voodoo doll, whatever happens to the voodoo doll happens to the person the voodoo doll is meant to look like, right? Yeah. Um, we're going to test that theory to see if it works, but I don't want to try it on you. Oh, um, so we're going to try it on this little guy here. Although you are going to play a role in this, you are going to be the actual voodoo doll. Which means that I, I, I'm going to inflict the pain on you, but it's ultimately not going to be inflicted onto you. It's going to be inflicted onto the little guy here. Now, obviously, this is a drawing of some unsuspecting victim. Um, what has this turned into? Yeah. So we need to give him a name. Uh, so whatever name you want to give him, We'll write the name. I've got to cut the Benny. We'll write the name down here. What name do you want to give him? Matt. Matt. Oh, is Leech going to suggest Matt? <laughs> you, you can write Matt down there then. Okay. There you go. Matt. Matt. Is it meant to be a particular Matt? 
I'm guessing it's Amber. It's a, it's, it's a guy we know quite well. <laughs> Star the documentary. He's in the, he's in the sales room now. Can you imagine we do this? And when we get to the point where I'm actually doing the voodoo thing, if we hear, ow! <laughs> <laughs> That'd just be the best thing ever. Anyway, this is going to be an effigy of Matt. We're going to put that right there. We don't need the rest of the cards. Oh, We're good. just going to uh, make that. And we need to know where to inflict the pain on Matt. So um, put, put your hand over there so I can't get to Matt. Now, I've got a whole bunch of different uh, cards here. There's about 20 or 30. All different places that uh, you could you could have the pain inflicted. Is it balls an option? Uh, I've got groin. Because I'm trying to make this family friendly, uh, so I've got groin. Uh, but we're going to pick one. We're going to pick one at random, okay? Okay. Um, and when I say random, I completely mean random. Now uh, I will do this for you because your hands are busy. Um, there's, there's like about twenty or thirty cards here. I'll tell you what. Give me a number between ten and twenty, and we'll deal down to that number. Fourteen. Fourteen. Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. So look, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Is that right? Yeah. And to further randomize it, we'll add those two digits together. So fourteen is made up of one and four. Add one and four together and we get five. Five. So I'll deal five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Now if you'd said one number less, it would have been the shoulder. Uh, it would have been the heel, it would have been the neck, it would have been the bum, that would have been interesting. Uh, it would have been the back, it would have been the eye. Um, but um, oh, we didn't get that, we got this. Please tell me we got his groin. No, we got the foot. Oh, Although I was boring. practicing this, like, this last night, I was practicing this. And um, I, I, I was practicing it, and I, I, I practiced this trick, and I wrote down on the thing, Michael, and I got thumb. <laughs> That explains. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this shit's real, Michael. Oh, that's all I'm God. saying. Um, but we got uh, we got foot. We got foot, right? Yeah. And and you've had your hand on uh, on. on uh, hang on, you're the voodoo doll. Sorry, I need to do one more thing because that's not happened yet. Uh, is your foot there? One minute. Hang on. Ow. I know. That, 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 <laughs> you're the voodoo doll. So I've just stamped on your foot, right? I'm glad it wasn't the groin. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if it was nipple, uh, <laughs> but it was uh, it was foot. So I stamped on the foot. Uh, lift up your hand, and we're going to turn over the card you've had your hand on the whole time. Oh no! And right there on Matt's foot, we now have a big red cross proof, my friend. Oh, that that's voodoo fine. is real. That's insane. I know, right? Okay. So it's really fun and it's very, very easy. When you think about it, it's a 10-20 force and it's out to lunch, right? That's all it is, a 10-20 force and out to lunch. And I know that there's magicians that look at stuff that's very, very simple and they overlook it and they go, well, that's too simple. I'm not going to do that because it's very, very simple. And they, they, they forget about the impact that something has on the spectators. And I'm telling you right now, the impact that this has on a spectator is nothing short of insane. From their point of view, they had a free choice of body parts. From their point of view, they took this picture of this little guy, they signed it, they've been holding onto it in their hand. You haven't gone anywhere near it, you haven't done anything near it. Somebody else has had a free choice of card or a free choice of body part, and yet you've been able to influence the um, the uh, you know, the card that they've been holding on to the whole time. Now, for a while, when I did this, I actually took out another business card with another picture of a stick man on, and I said, that's the voodoo uh, doll, and that is going to be where we actually mark the... Um, we're going to mark the voodoo doll there, and whatever we do happens to that card that you're holding on to. That's going to represent you. And what I used to do is I had this card put down to one side, and when they would select foot, I'd give them a needle, and I'd have them stab the foot, and then when they turn the card over, the red X would be there on their foot. And that was a really fun way of doing it. But ultimately, I changed it to kind of playfully pretending to stamp on their foot because it's kind of a really, uh, it, it, it kind of fits with my character. And obviously, I don't actually nobble them. But the, the, the whole idea of it is it's just fun. And you kind of go, oh, I'm going to have to uh, inflict some pain on you now. You've said foot. Hey, at least it wasn't nipple. That would have been a way more weird situation for you and for me. Brace yourself. Here we go. Boom. Um, and, and it's kind of fun. It fits in with me as a character. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You could have another business card and actually get a needle and kind of make it more of a uh, more of a realistic 
um, kind of darker style presentation. Now, uh, this this routine has been a real worker for me. As I say, it's another one that I always bring out at uh, Halloween, uh, and it's one that I performed in restaurants for years. It's going up on the Netrix this Monday, so if you do want to learn it, you can go onto the Netrix. That's www.thenetrix.com, and you can get access to this video and a bunch of others as well. I think we're up to about 500 routines up there right now. And you can join the Discord, which is really cool because the Discord is super fun and we've got loads of events that are going up there on literally a daily basis. Um, but this particular routine, Voodoo Man, I love performing it. I'm very proud of it. This is your third voodoo trick that you might not have seen before. So there you go, guys. That's another video in the bag. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. Like I said before, if you want to join the Netflix, it's www.thenetrix.com. That's www.thenetrix.com. Go and check it out and see what the fuss is about. And uh, go and join the Discord as well, because that's popping and popping big time. I'm going to be back again tomorrow with another video. Thank you once again for joining me. Thank you so much. Magic TV would not be Magic TV if it wasn't for you guys checking out the video. So thank you so much. I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic TV.